In this video, we're going to look at TEM for transmission lines. Hey Matt, what does TEM mean? Oh, TEM, of course. Transverse electromagnetic waves. We'll see where the term comes in a minute. So we start with what we began a while back. We've got an expression for the voltage and current along mm -hmm. a transmission line. Mm -hmm. And we have this one, a function that's delayed with this argument. And this wave here is going in which direction? Forward. Forward, to the right. And this one? Backward. Backward wave. So we have a voltage along the line is a sum of forward and backward traveling waves. And the current is the difference of those. This minus sign is really important to remember, but we also have to divide by Z naught. Z naught is the characteristic impedance we had calculated previously as LV. And if you substitute in for V, we get this. So that's what Z naught is. And so, don't forget a uh, small v is velocity and big v is voltage. Yeah, so keep that in mind. Oh, by the way, while we're on the subject of units, in case anybody forgot, what's the units of v? Voltage. And it's volts. volts. And the <laughs> units of i? Amperes. Amps. So volts, amps. Oh, just for fun, what's the product? Volts, amps, what do we call that? Watts. Watts. Let's not forget that. Now, to make things in terms of understanding this, this kind of equation messy, we want to make it simple. So I'm going to get rid of the backward wave. That's going to go to zero. So we only have forward traveling waves. And you can see that if Z0 is real, then V and I are in phase. Now, so just to be clear, this part would be uh, V plus, and this part would be I plus, right, from our previous notation? Yeah, so in summary, that's absolutely right. We call this V plus, the wave going to the right, and this piece with the Z naught, so mm. I'll write it like that, is going to be I plus. Mm -hmm. Now, what we would like to do is try to visualize this because it's not clear. So we're going to have a video come up, and then we're going to look at it and explain how that video works. Ooh. So there, there's our, our video, and what we have is two plates, and they're charged up. And uh, Sam is going to take us through this to explain how the video is going and what's happening here. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, well, you do see... Uh black dots on the top and the bottom plates, and those dots represent uh, positive charges in our case. Yep. Um, and where the positive charges clump together, you see a field line coming out from them, pointing to, uh, well, less populated um, charged areas. So I guess we can say that um, from clumps of positive charges, you would get fields going to uh, less populated areas. And what about the wave? Can you take us through tracking the wave here? Yeah. Um, well, right you, now we... you want to use this? Yeah. Good. If we look... Okay, here we see a maximum going in this direction. Or rather, an uh, upward pointing field going in one direction. And if we track again, we see the same thing. So I guess we have some sort of uh, wave traveling in right. the forward direction. And we can see that here, if, we, if I move my hand, it's positive. So where you got a clumping, I'm moving, tracking the clump, the arrows are going down, the voltage is across that way, and the electric field mm -hmm. is across mm -hmm. that way. So I think we should look at this a little more carefully and analyze what's going on by drawing a snapshot of this video. So that's yeah, that what we're going to do next. Here we are. Now we have a drawing frozen a piece of, of this uh, video here. And we want to look at what this means. So first of all, Sam, can you tell us where the current is going? Well, the posit positive charges would be going in the forward direction, right? Right. And the positive charges are clumped there, and when they're clumped, 
you got an uh, E field. A, an E electric field here because this is like a locally frozen like a piece of a capacitor. capacitor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we know where the fields are, so let's label them. So where's the electric field? Um, all these arrows pointing up and down are the E fields. Ah, uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's and good. what about the units of E? Do you want to write that on there too? That would be volts per meter. And now we uh, need to label the current just for here. Try that one. That's good. So it's the positive charges are traveling in the forward direction. So this would be the current. And finally, we want to know the magnetic field associated with this picture. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, the magnetic field is generated by the current. Right. And if you use the right-hand rule uh, properly, then you would see that inside inside the line, the, the H field would be pointing into the page. Right. That would be H. Into the page, out. So under the line, that way out. And uh, we can see that that's the basic picture. So, oh, before we go further, H, units of H. Amperes per meter. Amps per meter, great. Now, although it may seem trivial to everyone, remember that this exists for two conductors. It's pretty obvious. You got a wire here and a wire here, or a plate here and a plate here. So it's always a two conductor situation for transmission lines. And finally, we can go back to this abbreviation. What, where does this abbreviation come from? It's transverse electromagnetic waves. Why transverse? Well, the E is in the X direction. The H is in the Y direction, given this diagram of the coordinates. So the E and H lie in XY plane, and that is perpendicular or transverse to the direction of the current mm. and transverse to the direction of the energy flow. And so now we have everything before us, so we know the transition of going from volts and amps to the electric field and the magnetic field. Oh, they actually might not see this too well. I'll take you out of the picture. Take me out of the picture. <laughs> So you can see the units of E and H. Uh, any questions? Or is that all clear to you, Sam? Um, this, this looks very clear to me. That's all good. Good job. I've learned a lot today. <laughs>